Are you ready for your daily dose of geekiness here on Friday evening? It's been a while since we've done a Weather for Weather Geeks on Friday, but we've got plenty of things to talk about this evening heading into a midsummer weekend in which we may be dodging a few thunderstorms, but we'll also have plenty of warm and humid air. Tomorrow marks the middle of July and also the middle of meteorological summer, the months of June, July, and August. So far this summer has been kind of a ho-hum season, both in terms of temperatures and severe weather. We've had hardly any severe weather over the last few months. And temperature-wise, uh, while June was a little cooler than average, July so far, a little warmer than the average. Uh, the two warmest days were last week on Wednesday and Thursday. We had a high of 89 both days. We had 85 today. So no 90 degree temperatures just yet in July. And we've actually only had one so far in 2023. Uh, we average about eight per year in our area, but there's usually or there's often, I should say, quite a wide variance from year to year. You know, some years uh, in the last couple of decades, we've had as many as 18 90 degree days. Uh, back in 2014, we had none. That was a pretty cool summer back in 2014. And again, so far this year, just one, even though we've hit 89 a few times. You may remember what uh, it was like on this date 28 years ago. Hard to believe it's been that long. Uh, 1995, July 14th, we had 97. We were in the middle of the most significant heat wave of the 1990s back in midsummer of 1995. We had 97 on today's date, 98 the day after. The same heat wave encompassed the entire Midwest and unfortunately led to a lot of fatalities in some of the big cities, um, especially in Chicago. It was particularly particularly rough in mid-July back in 1995. All right, back here in 2023, uh, we had a warm and muggy and fairly seasonable, pretty typical July day today. I've been keeping an eye on the radar this evening, but expecting to see a continuing weakening trend of some of this convection that has been impacting parts of uh, Michigan, extreme northwest Ohio, and out towards Putin Bay and the islands on Lake Erie. And uh, I expect this to continue to fall apart, generally speaking, as we go through the evening. So we've got a dry forecast continuing into the overnight. Severe weather risk this evening uh, from parts of the uh, Corn Belt back into the uh, Plain States. We had a few uh, thunderstorms off to our east earlier on today. As we transition into the weekend, not much has changed with our ideas for the weekend. I do think this will be a pretty hit or miss kind of a day, Saturday afternoon. A lot of us will probably miss not seeing a lot of model evidence right now that this is going to be some sort of widespread, most places get wet kind of a thing, Saturday afternoon, Saturday evening. But the chances there that you see a pretty feisty, pretty, you know, uh, drenching summertime thunderstorm. That chance is there, even though a lot of us will probably try to be dry for a lot of the daylight hours. Uh, the Storm Prediction Center uh, did continue to advertise that low end severe weather risk tomorrow. And just a reminder, when we're talking about a severe weather risk, we're talking about the risk of damaging wind gusts, large hail, isolated tornadoes. Um, and it's a it's a one level one on that one to five severe weather scale. So, you know, it's uh, not gonna be a big severe weather day tomorrow, I don't think, but could someone get a feisty storm? Yeah, that's gonna be a possibility. Could even draw a cold front on the weather map. Uh, this is more like just a trough of low pressure. There's really no air mass change with this front. So we'll get off to a dry start Saturday. And as we get into the afternoon, this run of our in-house model here, you know, has a little bit more organization to the activity than some of our other short range modeling. This model did pretty poorly yesterday with yesterday's lack of thunderstorms. Um, a couple of days ago on Wednesday, it was advertising quite a few more storms in our area for Thursday than actually happened. And I, you know, I told you if, you, if you watched Weather Geeks on Wednesday, I told you I really didn't believe what it was advertising. And I think it's probably a little overdone with the coverage again on Saturday. I think this will be more hit or miss, at least through most of the daylight hours. Now, as we get into the evening, we might see an uptick in the coverage of showers, perhaps some thunder at that point. Um, but I'll tell you, I think a lot of the afternoon uh, is, you know, going to be okay for a lot of outdoor activities. Give me a day to stay weather aware, though. Make sure you have the Storm Tracker 21 app so you can keep tabs of things on the interactive radar. If any warnings would be issued, you'd get those, of course, pushed to you on the, on the app. Either way, showers will probably fade away then Saturday night, and clouds should break for plentiful sunshine on Sunday. Should be a pretty fine July afternoon, kind of like we had today on Sunday. Then on Monday, Monday may kind of shape up to be kind of similar to tomorrow with a dry start, another weak front coming our way, and a scattering of showers and storms pretty likely as we get into the afternoon and evening on our Monday.
So the weekend temperatures, plenty warm, but nothing crazy for this time of the year, of course. 88 tomorrow, 86 on Sunday. These will probably be the two warmest days of the next seven. I think we're going to spend a lot of next week with highs in the lower 80s. This, you know, of course, heat dome or big ridge is the big national weather story. Uh, we're going to be flirting with the upper 120s, perhaps even 130 in Death Valley, California uh, this weekend, especially on Sunday. Phoenix, it's just miserably hot right now. Same thing in Vegas. Uh, you know, it's July. It's the Southwest. It's supposed to be hot, right? Well, you know, some of this is pretty excessive and for several days in a row, they're going to be dealing with some pretty extreme heat, not just one or two days, but several days. Now, this heat ridge will expand eastward next week, but uh, the way this kind of works out is that you know, in the northern for the northern branch of the jet stream, I should say, uh, it's going to prevent the heat from making northward inroads. Um, so we're still under the influence of that kind of westerly to northwest flow aloft, and that's going to kind of deflect uh, the the high heat off to our south and to our west for the foreseeable future. You know, I don't see a truly scorching hot midsummer pattern for our region anytime real soon. This is kind of kind of panning out. As we expected uh, this summer, if you remember our summer outlooks from late May, you know, with, with El Nino coming on, oftentimes a, a pretty stout El Nino, uh, if it has an influence on our summer patterns, it tends to be an influence of uh, on the cooler side, I should say. Um, we don't see a lot of really hot El Nino summers, especially if El Nino is on the stronger side. So everything's kind of behaving as we expected. Uh, we advertised a lack of high heat, we advertised things being on the drier side. Even though we've done better with moisture of late, uh, half of our area roughly still running some deficits dating back towards late spring. All right, hope you and yours have a good Friday night, a good weekend, everyone. I'll see you back here on Monday for the Valley's most in-depth forecast video.